And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Poikilo Pluron, which was a request by Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. It was a tetanurin theropod that lived in the Middle Jurassic in what is now Normandy, France. And it looked like other theropods with the long tail, the long legs, and the elongate skull. It's estimated to be about 30 feet or 9 meters long. And it had long forelimbs, arms, that were about 60 centimeters or 24 inches long. That doesn't sound that long. It's got two foot long forelimbs on a 30 foot long body. Well, they could always be shorter, right? <laughs> I guess so. We've talked about that in other theropods. Poikilopleuron had 14 pairs of belly ribs also, which we don't talk about the belly ribs too much. The type and only species is Poikilopleuron bucklandi. The genus name means varied ribs because it's got different kinds of ribs. There were three types found. And the species name is in honor of William Buckland, which you might have guessed. Poikilopleuron was first named by Jacques Amand Udes de Longchamp in 1836, and he published more details in a monograph in 1837. The holotype unfortunately was destroyed in World War II. It was at the Musée de la Faculté de Sciences de Cannes. Hopefully I pronounced that okay. That's a bummer that they got destroyed. Although they were known to science for quite a while before they got destroyed. 1836? Yes. That's one of the oldest. Well, on the bright side, there are casts of the holotype that exist. So Better than Spinosaurus. Yes. And those casts are at the Natural History Museum in France, the national one, and the Yale Peabody Museum. The holotype included Gastralia, you know, the ribs, uh, the tail vertebrae, a left forelimb, a hind limb, phalanges, and chevrons. And the Gastralia, phalanges, and forelimb were cast, and now those are the plastotype. Plastotype. Mm -hmm. It's like, we keep hearing about more types. I know. People just stick everything in front of type. But I guess that, presumably, that must mean that there is no holotype anymore. Well, it got destroyed. So the type is a plaster replica. Yeah. Now, when it was first named, they said that there were similarities between Poikilopleuron and Megalosaurus, which makes sense. Megalosaurus came up a lot in those days. Another large theropod? Yes. Now, De Longchamps chose the name, the species name, Buckland Eye, after William Buckland, in case Poikilopleuron got synonymized with Megalosaurus later, and then it would keep the species name Buckland Eye, because there's a Megalosaurus Buckland Eye. Oh, that's confusing. Yeah. Or was it clever? I don't know. <laughs> In 1923, Friedrich von Huhn found Poikilopleuron to be a megalosaurus, but a different species, not Bucklandi. So that, I guess, didn't really work out. So to avoid confusion, he renamed Poikilopleuron Bucklandi to Megalosaurus Poikilopleuron. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the first guy was playing 3D chess. And it's like, <laughs> if you synonymize these, you're going to have to come up with a new species name. <laughs> Maybe. The way that Poikilopleuron has been spelled, it has also been different over the years. It was only partially Latinized, so sometimes it's spelled with a, a C for the kilo part. Sometimes it's spelled poi, P-O-I, kind of like the Hawaiian dish. And that's closer to the original Greek as well. Mm. But now it's usually spelled P-O-E, or maybe always. There were up to five species of Poikilopleuron. There was Poikilopleuron... Gallicum, which Cope renamed to Lalaps Gallicus in 1869. There was Poikilopleuron valens. That one was spelled with the C instead of the K. That was named in 1870 by Lady, but probably the fossil was Allosaurus. There was Poikilopleuron pacillus, named by Richard Owen in 1876, then renamed by Cope in 1879 as Poikilopleuron minor, but then that was renamed to Aristosuchus in 1887 by Harry Seeley. There was Poikilopleuron schmidi, which is now a gnomum dubium, and Poikilopleuron veils duensis, which was renamed as Dubraeosaurus. So now there's only the one species. Again, that's Poikilopleuron bucklandi. Back to its original 1830s name. Yes. And that's considered to be valid. Just some fun quotes that I found 
while reading these older papers. In 1870, Lady wrote the Poikilopleuron had been viewed as a crocodilian, quote, but probably pertains to the dinosaurs, end quote, and then said it estimated to be about 25 feet or 7.6 meters long. Lady also wrote, quote, one of the most remarkable characters of the Poikilopleuron is the presence of a large medullary cavity within the bodies of the vertebrae, paralleled among living animals, so far as I know, only in the caudal vertebrae of the ox. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. And in 1879, J.W. Hulk wrote, quote, One difficulty, and not the least, which besets the student beginning to study fossil reptiles, is the great embarrassment occasioned by the not unfrequent description of the same reptile under different names, involving the worse than merely useless multiplication of genera and species. Wherever, then, the identification of a newer with an older genus can be established, entailing as it should, the abandonment of the newer generic name, it is to be looked on as a positive gain. I now submit to the criticism of the Geological Society the evidence which appears to me to identify beyond reasonable doubt Poikilopleuron Bucklandi of Eudes de Longchamps pair with an older acquaintance Megalosaurus Bucklandi. <laughs> an older acquaintance. Yeah. We're all well acquainted with Megalosaurus. So yes. Let's get rid of this Poikilopleuron guy. <laughs> I just, he was a, maybe one of the original lumpers. He yeah. did not like having, he calls it the great embarrassment, <laughs> having all these different names. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Now, in 2003, Ronan Alain and Daniel Chur found that there was no overlapping material to compare Poikilopleuron and Megalosaurus, so whether or not they were synonymous is unclear, and that's why I say it's probably valid. Definitely not the first dinosaurs to be considered valid at the same time without any overlapping material. Mm -hmm. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 